Okay, uh, this is the second part of uh, our lecture for today. So we're going to move to the next slide. Here is another uh, theorem, and there's um, eight pieces to it. It's a little hard to maybe see all of them. There we go, a little easier. Uh, it's a theorem of um, limits of transcendental functions. Transcendental functions are those that are not algebraic, and these have to deal primarily, the first six, are dealing with um, the trig functions, and the last two are dealing with uh, exponential and logarithmatic. Now, if you take a look at these, consider what we have. Um, first thing I want you to, to look at is look at what we are approaching. We're letting the inputs approach this value C, each one of these. What would you consider the process you're going to use? We've talked about it before. We've called it our friend. What is it that we're going to be able to do if we have any one of these? We don't have to do anything except Okay, direct substitution. Okay, so these are really, um, we can say no-brainers. Just use direct substitution. That's it. Now, of course, things get a little more complicated as we work through some of these, and we're going to talk about a um, what is trig, and I will give you my own um, review lesson on that um, next week. But for now, um, let's just uh, understand that we've all had trig, whether we understand it completely or not, but we do know we've had trig, and we're going to uh, use then direct substitution when we have a limit. So here's our first example of that. Uh, we've got the cosine function. And uh, we have the limit as uh, the input approaches 5 pi divided by 3. So we have cosine of 5 pi divided by 3. Now, that's an OK answer. <laughs> um, the only problem is that it would be nice if we would resolve that into um, a different value, um, a more a simplified value. And um, at this point, um, Again, I, I want to go back and give you my own lesson in person, face-to-face -face on this. So um, I am just going to resort to our Inspire here. And if I take the cosine of um, 5 pi divided by 3. Now, if I, if I press Enter, we're going to get now the exact answer because that is an exact uh, value of one half. And again, I am going to explain all of this in a more conceptual manner as to what exactly that represents uh, when I see you in person. Okay, let's uh, move on. If you take a look at this, you uh, recognize that one thing we have uh, is the quotient of two functions. Um, we're going to uh, also look at, uh, actually it's a com composition because we have the natural log of, and uh, it may not be clear to you, but it's the natural log of that quantity. Um, I'm going to, because it's a natural log, I'm going to write it using direct substitution, and so I have 1 divided by e to the first power, or simply uh, the natural log of natural log of 1 divided by e. Uh, let's talk uh, a little bit about this uh, again. This could be the same thing as the natural log of e to the negative 1. If we raise that, um, you know, if we take that term above the fraction line, you might also recall that we have a uh, property of natural log of logarithms, not just natural logs. It says a natural log to a power is the same thing as the power of the uh, logarithm, and so in this case, we have 
negative the natural log of e. But we can do something else with that. Um, let's go back, and I know I've, I've talked about this before, but it bears repeating, I'm sure. Uh, if we have the natural log of e, we need to keep in mind that that natural log of e has a, a value to it. But more importantly, we need to think about what does that value represent. The natural log, and so if we have a natural log expression, it said it has a value. That value represents an, ex, an exponent. Hence, the natural log expression also represents an exponent. Well, if it's an exponent, exponents only go on bases of some sort. So the, what, what is the base of this exponent? And because we're dealing with the natural log, the base is e. And so e, the base of this natural log, e to this power equals what? Well, it equals this right here. So that value goes right there. So now the question is, what is that exponent on the base? Well, e to what power equals e, and that is equal to 1. So if we go back now with that understanding, we end up with negative 1. The natural log of e is 1. So the limit of, as x approaches 1, of the natural log of x divided by e to the x is simply equal to negative 1. Now, we have some review here with our natural log to consider. So if you need to, go back over this discussion. And remember, we must understand, we must have this understanding that a natural log expression has a value that value represents an exponent, hence the expression represents an exponent also. Okay, uh, let's go on. Next function. Now, I do not expect you to be able to memorize theorem 2.7. Uh, this theorem is in every calculus book, but it may not be called 2.7. It may be another number. So the numbers are not something that I want you to try to memorize. What I do want you to know is that we have these theorems that we can use. We can go back and we can cite them as reasons why we understand that this problem has this answer. Okay, so functions that agree at all but one point. We've actually looked at many of these already, but we didn't uh, do it under the um, theorem 2.7. So let's consider this one more time. Um, let C be a real number, okay? Let uh, f of x equal g of x. So now keep in mind, this means that the output of f of x equals the output. So the output of f of x equals the outputs of g of x for everything except x equaling that value c. In an open interval, we haven't talked about an open interval, an open interval would be uh, one, that, um, one that contains uh, the letter c uh, but uh, does not include the letter c. Okay, in an open interval containing the letter c. Um, if the limit of the output puts of g of x as x approaches c exists, and so does the limit of f of x. So the limit uh, of, of f of x as x approaches c exists, and so does the limit of g of x as x approaches c exists, and then those two limits are also the same. So if the limit of g of x and the, exists and the limit of x, f of x also exists, then those two have limits are equal. Um, if we look at this, let me give you an example of how this comes up. If I have the limit as x approaches negative 1, and we look at 2x squared um, minus x minus 3 divided by x plus 1. Now again, we've looked at some similar to this. We have um, we could consider that this is the quotient of two, fact, of two functions, uh, f of x divided by g of x. Um, it is a rational function because it is in the fraction format. Um, if we're going to work with this, now 
here's an example again, x does not equal c. In other words, I cannot replace this with negative 1 because the denominator would equal 0. So I cannot use, and we'll just put that down, cannot use uh, direct substitution. Okay. However, can we rewrite this function in a format so that uh, we, in fact, could use direct substitution? So we're going to take this and we're going to say the limit as x approaches negative 1. And we want to know, can we, that's a, binom a quadratic, so do we have binomial factors of 2x squared minus x minus 3? Hopefully, one of them might be x plus 1. Now let's see, if that's the case, this would have to be 2x. Uh, if this is 2x, let's see, this is uh, 2x, and uh, this would be um, minus 1. Now let's see, is that going to work or not? That would have to be plus 1. Uh, let me pause this and come back. Okay, uh, let's go back. Let's make one change on this, make this uh, truly a problem we can work here with what I'm going to talk about. Let's make it 2x squared plus x minus 1. And that way then we can factor this as 2x minus 1 and x plus 1. By doing so, we are able, we have factors that we can cancel, and we then can uh, write this. Notice I keep using the direction. I keep telling myself, and it's incorrect to not do this, you must keep writing this until we take, until we use direct substitution. So we have now the limit as x approaches negative 1 of 2x minus 1. Now can we use direct substitution? Yes. And our answer would be 2 times negative 1 minus 1, or simply negative 3. Okay, going over to our INSPIRE. If we look then at uh, the limit, we'll go down to Menu, Calculus, Limit, as x approaches negative 1, and we'll put in a fraction here. Uh, we have 2x squared plus x minus 1 divided by x plus 1. And when we take that limit, we in fact do have negative 3. Okay, um, we're going to uh, continue our work, and uh, this is the next theorem is called the squeeze theorem. Uh, it's also known as the sandwich theorem or the pinching theorem. We're going to see why uh, that is called that. Um, here we have another little fill in. Um, if we have, um, and I'm going to help you with this. For the squeeze theorem, um, if we have, and uh, let me just do a little bit of work on that. Um, there we go. We'll just make that a little wider so we can see it here. Um, if we have the um, situation where h of x is a uh, less than or equal to f of x, less than or equal to g of x. And um, I'm going to, because of the time, I'm going to stop this and we'll pick it up in just a little bit.